Well, we're back from our Christmas trip to northwestern Arkansas. And while we were gone, central Arkansas got a heck of a snowstorm. Everybody's out of power, thousands of people. And over here, the power company and the tree cutting company have converged in front of my property. And they're working like little beavers trying to get us power back. So they're doing real well. We're real proud of them. And poor old Mr. Tree Face, look at his nose. It's all red. Poor thing. Looks like he's in agony. But, you know, the wintertime beauty just can't be beat. Even though Mr. Tree Face might be suffering. Got some broken trees over there. Broken trees here. It's just gorgeous all the way around. Well, I've got the side completely ripped apart on this thing. Uh, the only way to do it was to get it just completely separate everything just to see what I've got. And, of course, you can see I've got a lot of wood here that's separated. Got a lot of cracks that need to be filled. All sorts of problems. And then over here, all of this is separated and it'll have to be repaired and glued. But it's no really big problem, you know. It's, no, uh, it's not something that's insurmountable. I've got a piece of plastic here that it's just, uh, you know, it's a piece of stuff I used for to repair radio one time and I kept the scraps and they make great little tools for getting the glue down in there. This is the wood we'll be using for the side. We'll be putting it, I'll be cutting it down to size, sliding that in there. I think it'll look real nice but you know this wood is uh, <coughs> covered up uh, with a very dark uh, tone anyway so it really doesn't matter what I use. I could use this side or that side. It's not Probably this side would be more like it. I don't know. We'll see when the time comes. You know, trying to find a piece of 3 8 inch plywood today. Try that on for size. Doesn't happen. Makes me so irritated. So what I got is quarter inch, and I'm going to have to, I figured out how I can use it. We'll glue a couple of pieces together for the side. You'll, you'll see later on. It'll work. The cabinet gluing has been coming along fairly well. I've got most of it glued already. Uh, but there's still a ways to go, you know. All right, that looks real good, nice and <clears throat> nice and tight along there. You know, this just came together real good. Okay, so this side's done. This side's done. Now we've got to get <clears throat> some glue down in the slot here. We this thing here needs to be drawn in this way. It's got to be straightened out. I got to clamp it together. <clears throat> and the way I get the glue down in there, there's even a separation over here. I don't know if you can see that separation or not, but I take my old Elmer's glue and I just dribble some in a paper plate. Then I take a piece of this uh, plastic. That you, know, you can get this plastic at Hobby Lobby over in the quilting department. It comes in a large sheet and, you know, very flexible. It's uh, used for patterns. And uh, Gary Rabbit told me about that. He's a member of the Antique Radio Forum. Uh, the very first radio I ever restored, I wound up buying a sheet of this because he told me and I, it solved my problem with that radio, and I'll tell you what, it's come in handy ever since for any, just about anything. Uh, I, I, do, I use it to, to put on the wood here uh, to keep it the, the wood from uh, sticking to the cabinet. Wood, it's plastic, it doesn't stick. And I use it for stuff like this, all kinds of things. But anyway, I need to get the uh, glue down in there, so I take the old very thin piece, and I just start slithering it down in there like that. All along, just kind of turn it around, let it dribble down in there on its own, bring it down. It works real well for getting down in those cracks and crevices. I can't tell you how good it works. And you can cut these things any shape, any size you want. Get it down in there. See how it goes way down in there? It really does a good job. Go back and get a little bit more. And some more goes down in there. It gets it really good. So that's how I get it down between each of the layers. You got to kind of take your time, make sure the glue goes down in there. Of course, when I squeeze the uh, the two pieces of wood together with the clamps, it's going to come up out of there. It's going to squeeze up out of there, but that's where a wet rag comes in handy. Now over here we have some glue that needs to go down in there. See how that that thing fits in there? Just perfect. In this particular uh, gluing, I'm going to go ahead and uh, glue just the one side. I'm going to glue and clamp just this one side. And then I'll come over after that's all dry and everything, and I'll glue and clamp over in this area here. Just kind of, you know, piece at a time. You don't want to over clamp, because the next thing you know, you got something clamped wrong. And once it sets and the glue's hardened, it's like, oh, man, I don't believe that. Look at that. It's out of alignment. 
or whatever the case may be. And I've had that happen, you know. And I learned from my lessons, I hope. And then take your wet rag, wipe off any excess before clamping. Give it a good wipe down. Most of it will just, oop, look at there, look at that. That thing didn't even, wasn't even held on there hardly. It just broke right off. I'll have to re-glue that. What I'm going to do with that, I'm going to wipe all that glue out of there completely. That's how bad that old glue was. And get the glue down in here off of this piece that just fell off. I'll wipe all of that off. And that's it. And we'll just let that dry. Nothing to it. Then we'll move, uh, do the same thing down this end and move the clamps down here. It's kind of a slow process. It's going to take, it's, you know, total time for <clears throat> just gluing alone is about four days. you got to wait for it to totally dry. Then, of course, we have to cut the piece to put in there. And there'll be some cleaning and sanding. And, you know, you don't, you don't want to glue new wood to this old stained area. You want it to be raw wood like this. So you got to sand it down. Well, there's just not too much more to go, though. All the laminations on this thing have finally been all glued together. It was a long process with a lot of musical clamps. Uh, those of you who have worked on cabinets know exactly what I'm talking about. But anyway, we're now to the point where we can actually cut a piece and put in here a new side. <clears throat> but before I did that, all gluing areas had to be sanded, hand sanded, every place where there's going to be glue. And sometimes I carried it back a little bit further, you know, just in case. Every area has to be hand sanded or sanded with a machine. Of course, I found out that, you know, regular old sandpaper or emery in this in this case, and, and my motor tool would help a little bit where the heavily glued areas were, the originally heavily glued areas were, and back here, and uh, anywhere. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to walk over to my old table saw here, and we're going to use this piece of wood right here, and we're going to cut out the side. The side has been replaced and it's nice and solid and it's lined up here and it's got that little ledge sticking out all the way across that it's supposed to have just like this one over here has that little ledge sticking out and it looks real good. However, it totally sucks. I do not like the way it turned out. Now here's why it really sucks. Right here, this molding is glued to the veneer. But you can see right here, it's lifted up. It's lifted up the veneer, and that molding is at an angle. That's no good. You can't have this molding at an angle like that. Also, in the rear, this cabinet had twisted. This cabinet had uh, twisted, and that, that's caused part of this uh, uh, molding to be like that. I'm going to have to, I didn't notice that until it was too late. I was concentrating more on the top here. Never even bothered to notice the bottom, you know, it looks okay down there, but not until I lifted it up and got examining everything did I notice that thing being at an angle like that. And I said, oh man, that, that is that is that is the pits. Anyway, this happens, you know. We hobbyists have these problems from time to time. It's no different than repairing a chassis and then turning it on and it doesn't work. Well, you got to go back to the drawing board. Well, guess what? we got to go back to the drawing board on this sometimes, too. You know, in particular, since I am a hobbyist, like I said, not a professional woodworker. And because the cabinet is twisted, you'll notice that there's a little lip right here. And there's an even larger lip down here. Let's see if I can zoom in on that a little closer. There's a little larger lip right here than there is here. Now, some of that I understood, you know, in the beginning. I could see that there was going to be a slight problem, but I figured it would be no greater than this right here. And I was willing to live with that rather than, you know, I tried to straighten the cabinet up a little bit, and I heard cracking and things like that going on. I said, no, I better stop. So I sort of halted it and said, I'll live with that. But now that I see that I've got this much at the bottom, I can't live with that. So all of this will be cut back out, and uh, we will start with a new piece of wood and see if we can't make it better on the second go round. Don't be afraid to do that. You know, don't be afraid to say, hey, you know, this is this is the pits. I got to do it over.
Well, once again, we have reached a degree of success. As you'll notice, the, the top edge now, I, I removed the panel, and fortunately, I was able to reuse it. I just needed to reclamp a little differently, slowly twist the cabinet best I could, and we now have a nice even edge here and a nice even edge here. Now there's going to have to be some fill wood glued in here and there, and uh, a little bit of wood filler along these little chips that came out from the saw blade uh, on the table saw, but you know, that's minor stuff. Right now I'm uh, kind of gluing this top down, the last clamp, and this, this next piece uh, will go inside to back up this piece, which will give us a, a double, double thickness here. I've got to cut it, slide it in, and then cement it to the inside, because that's just a little bit too flexible. We'll give it more strength. The only problem we're going to have when we're done is something I cannot, I've tried to deal with it and I can't. Right down along here is a space, all the way down on this uh, this uh, fluted molding. I tried drawing it together. Uh, it won't draw together. It's just warped, and there's nothing I can do about it. Now, I can go ahead and fill that in with wood. It might look a little hokey, but I don't know what I'm going to do with that. I can, I can slip some wood down there and glue it, and then just trim it down. I don't think anyone would notice it. Actually, I don't think anyone would notice it any, either way. Okay, so what I can do is finish up with this clamp here, and then I've got to put the uh, the other trim molding around the bottom that's here. I'll have to put it over here on this one. It'll come down along here and go wrap around the front. And then after that, it'll be stripping the cabinet. One more thing before we end this video. Once the uh, wood is cut and glued up on the inside to you know, give a little extra double double layer strength to this wall. Well, I have a few of the uh, the gluing blocks, gluing wedges left over uh, that fell out of this thing from the wall when it fell apart. I'll glue a couple of those in along there and maybe one on the top edge along the wood. I'm not exactly certain. So until then, this is John.